every day that we record this new format, we're trying to communicate the whole concept that God is speaking to you. It's not about me and it's not about being in front of a camera or being live or being canned or being videotaped or whatever it may be that most people might be doing for some other reason. In other words, we don't ask for money. We don't have an ego <laughs> to satisfy. <laughs> Believe me, if I want to have an ego, I'll go out dancing. I'm a dancer, so <laughs> if I want people to notice me. I go dancing. But the reality is, is that hoping that as we communicate, like daily light and reading the devotionals, you begin to get a gist of how Jesus can talk to you and might talk to you today in your circumstances. Because there is no doubt that you and I, okay, maybe me more than you, I don't know, really need help. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, come on now, let's get real. Have you looked at the world lately? I don't care if you think you have your 401k or whatever it is you think you're okay with, whether it be 401 or O or whatever. The point being is that we all need Jesus every day of our lives, whether we know it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not. We need to keep developing a better relationship with God because the times, they are changing. And, uh, Frankly, it's getting a little weird out there. I mean, you could call me a weirdo, but unless you're very much grounded and really understand that Jesus wants to speak to you and he wants to have a personal dynamic relationship in the word of God, yes, study your word, read it daily, but also in a personal application way that he causes you to live out your devotions, to live out the scriptures that are in your life, to live out a living witness that you are of Jesus to someone, whether it be to yourself, to your children, to your family, to your spouse, to your neighbors, to your father, to your mother, to your uncles and aunts, or whoever it may be. You are a living witness. You are a word of God being accomplished in this world as a testimony to angels if nothing else, but also to everyone around you. You are the restrainer, believe it or not, of the Antichrist. You're stopping him from coming. Yeah, you. You are the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. You're the preservative. Because the Holy Spirit inside you is changing you to be more of a vessel, more like a cup that he can fill up, you know, and he can do his thing, not you do your thing. I mean, I know that there are people that like to run around, you know, and they keep pouring out, you know, the Holy Spirit out of their lives and using all these particular gifts and things, you know, they think they're an apostle or a prophet or a teacher or an elder or a deacon or a preacher or whatever it is that they think they are, or they go to the school of the prophets. <sighs> you don't need that. You just need Jesus. <laughs> Jeez. Let the egotists have their egos. Let the toys have their toys and let the people that play with joys have their joys. But for you and I, let's examine the word of God and follow Jesus and learn to hear his voice as opposed to going after feelings, nothing more than feelings, with some of the giftings that people think that they got to get, you know, whether you're a worship leader already or whether you're a pastor or whether you're an elder or teacher, whether you are a prophet or not. <laughs> probably not no offense to you I mean there are a few but very few but the point being is that whether you're into the apostolic thingies or the Pentecostal thingies or the charismatic thingies get rid of the thingies and stay with Jesus you know I mean he's gonna take you all the way because literally every single individual person that follows Jesus has all those abilities and gifts in them you are a son and daughter of God. You lack nothing. Jesus lacked nothing. He held all offices. Bottom line, pretty simple. So you can pick and choose what you want to lose, you know, and then become only one thing. But 
<laughs> you could just walk with God and have everything. I somehow think that had to check the date. That's a better way to go. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. How long wilt thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Truly my soul waits upon God. From him cometh my salvation. My soul waits. Wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. As I read that, I can't help but be sorrowful for the times that I know if you're going through it right now, what I have been through in those times where, though I have heard Jesus speak to me audibly, and though I have walked with him in a tight intimacy that was phenomenal, that to this day I still don't hear a lot of people talking like that, and that I've experienced things with the Father that are just, like Paul said, would be sin to share. But there's also those times where I've cried out like David, you know, oh God of my salvation, where are you? Why are you far from me? Where is deliverance? Why have you left me like this? What is going on? And maybe you're there today. And I hurt for you because it hurts. There is no comforting for that. There is no, oh, get over it kind of scripture for you. There is no, oh, well, you got the Holy Spirit and you, you know, you Christians don't suffer. Christians don't agonize. Christians don't go through the Garden of Gethsemane. No, only Jesus does that. You don't need platitudes. You don't need to be lied to. You just need to know that he's with you always, even to the end of this age, even to the end of the world, but also, my friend, even unto the end of your life. For if you are gasping for breath and you're hanging on, clinging to this life for the last chance to live, you think, oh, to be absent from the body, very much so is to be present with the Lord. There is no doubt. There is fact. And the reality is when you close your eyes the last time and give up the earthly breath, the breath of God will return to himself and the Holy Spirit will bear you upon his wings to Jesus himself, where you shall see him as he is, and you will be with him always. So fear not death, for it is just a passing away from this life to eternity, forever and ever and ever, and I can't wait. But in the sufferings of this world and in the times that you go through, the Lord is with you, always. Hallowed be thy name. Thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, and one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Then said I, Oh, woe is me, for I am undone. I am coming apart at the seams. 
I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore, I have poor of myself. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin, that we might be partakers of his holiness, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Let us draw near with a true heart, knowing full well that we don't deserve to be there, and that in his presence we will come undone. But that because of the blood of Jesus, because of the sacrifice he's made, because of his works that he has done, we need do no other thing except to come to the Father, admitting our sins, being forgiven, being changed, and being made into his image by the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, as we let him accomplish his work in us, as he's doing to us what we wanted from the very beginning anyways. Isn't that what you want?